And I now give the floor to His Excellency Rore Areza, Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Buenos días. Good morning. We address this August Assembly, Mr. President, during its 72nd session on behalf of the constitutional president of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro Moros, and therefore on behalf of a sovereign people which loves peace, respect between nations, and compliance uh, with uh, the highest uh, and most elevated principles of international law the Bolivarian Republic, uh, people of Venezuela. In the 19th century, the liberating army of Simón Bolívar emerged uh, from the territory of Venezuela, not to conquer or dominate, but to assist uh, kindred peoples in attaining independence, to return home afterwards with the satisfaction of having been useful to the cause of liberty and equality. That is the spirit that characterizes our people and the action of our revolutionary government at a different uh, time for humanity, at a difficult uh, time for humanity. This is why we also always follow the Bolivarian principle of peace. We are in the home of peace, the home of peaceful uh, settlements, the territory of international law and its principles. It em we are embraced and protected by the Charter of the United Nations, a noble multilateral instrument to avoid a war and injustice. Therefore, this uh, rostrum should be respected, protected, and cared for by nations. It is an almost sacred uh, sp space for peoples who work for peace and understanding. However, this home, the home of multilateralism and respect for the equality of peoples and status, states, has been profaned, uh, disrespected, and offended over and over again by arrogant powers that intend to impose the unilateral rules of their game on us, the rules of war, of suffering, and of pain. It was already said in this very spot with a high uh, voice uh, and an incomparable style by Commander Hugo Chavez in tw uh, 2006. You will probably still remember what he said about the sink of sulfur. It is still the case. He tried to do this to protect and generate the necessary discussion to respond to the already severe unilateral threats to international peace. And nevertheless, a week ago, this uh, chamber and uh, other nations of the world through the media saw another profanation of the purposes of uh, the United Nations. As if he were the world's emperor, President Donald Trump used this rostrum built for peace to announce war, the total destruction of member states, the application of coercive unilateral and illegal measures, threatening and judging as if he had dictatorial absolute power over the sovereign states that are members of this organization. Paradoxically, in a gesture of uh, political hypocrisy and brazenness, Donald Trump uh, based his attacks on humanity on the values of peace and prosperity. In our case, uh, Mr. President, let us recall that the uh, now ex-president, Barack Obama, with a different style but with the same objective, had defined the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela through uh, an executive order as an uh, exceptional and unusual threat to national security in March of 2015. Today, we must report uh, to the world that our people have been directly threatened by the President of the United States with the use of the most powerful military force that have ever existed in the history of humanity on the 11th of August of this year. As a complement to this anachronistic offensive behavior to our sovereignty of peace, which has always uh, been part of, uh, of our Latin American peace, President Trump imposed uh, illegal economic sanction sanctions on us in August of last year, in order uh, of this year, to make our people suffer and undertake non-democratic changes in our system of government, uh, 
Donald Trump uh, last uh, week uh, called on the uh, spirit of the Cold War, the inquisitorial spirit of uh, Joseph McCarthy and Richard uh, Nixon to support his threats against our uh, country. Venezuela will always deal with uh, the government of the United States uh, with mutual respect. But as a free people, we are prepared to defend our sovereignty, our independence, and our democracy under any scenario and in any way. Faced with such attitudes, the United Nations must uh, generate effective mechanisms to neutralize the, uh, the bellicose pretensions and the intentions of overcoming multilateralism, which has cost us so much to build in favor of dictatorial unilateralism of those who, through the use of weapons and economic uh, blackmail, uh, intend to destroy the uh, diversity of humanity. Last March, uh, the 120 uh, 120 members of this August Assembly, the Non-Aligned uh, Movement, approved the political declaration of New York as a tool to uh, denounce, condemn, and act together against the course of unilateral measures which uh, some international players are imposing in a flagrant violation of the Charter of the United Nations. In our uh, remarks, on behalf of the presidency of the uh, non-aligned movement at the G77 in China meeting last Thursday. We also propose to extend it to this group of uh, countries which is focusing on economic uh, issues, the New York Declaration, because the merciless uh, unilateral attacks against the economies of our peoples are an essential part of these unilateral coercive measures. We must urgently respond in a multilateral fashion to avoid the imposition of coercive measures including and even for the governments that illegally impose them uh, be made uh, to legally compensate uh, the governments uh, that have effect suffered from their effects. We condemn all unilateral actions against uh, kindred people like Russian and Iran and especially the criminal blockade that, that has been imposed on our sister Republic of Cuba for over 50, five decades and which uh, shows uh, the direction which the new winds of U.S. Uh, unilateralism are blowing. Venezuela vehemently opposes the use of nuclear weapons in our planet. It leads to unimaginable pain and suffering, and this is why last Wednesday we signed the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. We must make a supreme effort to de-escalate and uh, lead to the disappearance of nuclear uh, confrontation. We hope that uh, this will happen through dialogue and humanistic uh, rationality. In terms of human rights, Venezuela, which in recent years has made an enormous effort to ensure the broadest uh, uh, social investment, redistributing a wealth of greatest violator of human rights, not only in its own territory, but throughout the world, and justified wars, uh, bombardments of civilian populations, clandestine jails where torture is uh, uh, applied, the imposition of unilateral measures against the economies of several countries, various forms of economic uh, pressure, and uh, unacceptable migratory policies. It is the only country that has ever used nuclear weapons against another people, a country which violating the uh, institutionality of the United Nations uh, invaded Iraq in 2003, uh, saying that it was seeking weapons of mass destruction, which they never found in spite of the more than a million deaths which this cruel intervention led to. The United Nations uh, wants to build a wall on the border with Mexico, and there are bills to reduce uh, immigrant rem remittances by 7%, not for Social Security, but to build the war, this execrable wall. We can conclude uh, that the United States has not re uh, ratified 72% of the major treaties uh, for human rights. In the United States, there is no independent institution to defend uh, and uh, promote human rights. The Special Rapporteur of the United Nations on extrajudicial and arbitrary killings denounced the lack of independence of the judiciary in the, the United States. 
solitary confinement is an extended practice in this country. The number of uh, homeless people is 3.5 million, 1.5 million girls and boys amongst them. Most people uh, who are homeless have no health coverage. The maternal mortality rate has increased in a dizzying fashion in recent years. Children can be condemned to life imprisonment. 70% of those uh, children are Afro-Americans. The Special Rapporteur for Education has denounced the use of electric shocks and other physical forms of coercion in educational centers. The United States is one of the seven countries in the world that has not ratified the Convention for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Uh, Maternity pay is not obligatory in the United States. Uh, the abuse uh, of the police forces against uh, uh, Afro-Americans is common. Uh, half uh, of Afro-Americans who are in a situation of poverty are in extreme poverty. The 23rd Amendment of the United States uh, uh, allows uh, slavery as a form of uh, a criminal sanction. Uh, one third of U.S. women are raped uh, throughout uh, their lifetimes. Racial discrimination is not only uh, there, it is very much alive and well uh, when we see supremacist uh, discourse and discrimination. Excuse uh, me for all of this detail, but there are things which the media tend to hide. Venezuela rejects violence in all its form, either uh, uh, anarchic uh, groups uh, or terrorist uh, groups which uh, try to control strategic resources, as well as the terrorism of nations uh, using uh, missiles and military uh, occupation. We see with pain how the Mediterranean Sea has become an enormous cemetery with the states uh, that are co-responsible for the original crises generated in the countries where the migrants are coming from, turning a blind eye, as well as the combination of both variants of terrorism. Bloody wars such as those prefabricated against Syria and Libya only leave death and desolation in their wake. Fortunately, the heroic uh, government and people of Syria, with the support of fair international allies, is drawing closer to a definite victory over terrorist uh, groups. Venezuela hopes for the success in the work of the Under Secretary General of the Fight Against Terrorism as the chief and uh, head coordinator of the U United Nations Global Strategy. It is our hope uh, that this work will also condemn state uh, terrorism. Venezuela encourages the relaunching of peace talks between Palestine and Israel. This process should lead to a firm and lasting peace between both states, recognizing the borders of Palestine as those existing prior to June 1967 in accordance with international law as well as the establishment of East Jerusalem as Palestine's capital. We believe that the United Nations should play a much greater role in resolving this historic unfair conflict. We thank the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, for his sincere efforts to facilitate the application of the Geneva Accords through the Good Offices mechanism in order to achieve a practical, satisfactory uh, outcome for the parties in the territorial dispute we are having with our brothers and sisters of the Cooperative uh, uh, Republic of Guyana. We will always be available as a country to open the path of peace. We are pleased at the peace agreements uh, between the government of Colombia and the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, which uh, Commander Hugo Chavez and President Nicolas Maduro devoted so much time and energy to. We will continue to facilitate conversations between the government of Colombia and the National Liberation Army, which is, are taking place in the Republic of Ecuador. Venezuela is not a drug-producing country. Institutional, uh, international institutions have certified that. We cooperate in a sovereign uh, fashion with all neighboring and non-neighboring countries in the fight against drug trafficking. We are concerned at the increase uh, in the drug production in our neighboring Colombia. But we have always reported the fact, pointed out the fact that consumer countries are 
magnets attracting both the production and the trafficking of drugs, and they should be responsible for the real control and the distribution and circulation of drugs uh, in their own territories. As we have uh, been working closely with the UNDP for many years, progress uh, towards the SDGs is simple for Venezuela. Our plan for our country and the 2030 agenda are not, o not only coincide, they are complementary. When it comes to financing, as you're aware, 76% of Venezuela's income in the last 18 years have been dedicated to social investment, and this will continue to increase. No economic at attack or illegal sanctions will prevent President Maduro from developing policies to guarantee the social rights of our compatriots. We are, however, concerned that uh, there are clear sources of financing, both for other kindred countries and those who have expressed their will to comply with the 2030 Agenda, even though they do not have the necessary funding to do so. The United Nations should devote itself to guaranteeing the necessary financing for the comprehensive sustainable development of all member states. Mr. President, it may not be a coincidence that just a few days earlier during this uh, 72nd uh, session, the effects of the so often warned and uh, feared uh, climate change manifested themselves uh, through the consecutive uh, and precedently violent hurricanes not very far from New York. The unusual fury of these natural phenomena affected our brothers and sisters in several countries of the Caribbean. The Prime Ministers of Antigua and Barbuda and Dominica, Gaston Brown and Roosevelt Sarek, uh, gave two extraordinary speeches to the General Assembly, where they expressed with courage uh, the, and uh, clarity the absolute truth, and uh, they urged the uh, taking of uh, rapid action to respond uh, to the scourges uh, in uh, extreme climate created by climate change. Ruzel Skerritt pointed out that, this, uh, that his people are the victims of a war that they did not choose, they did not want, the war of capitalist countries against Mother Nature. Today, more than ever, we pick up on the motto of uh, environmental groups. Let us not change the climate. We should change the system. Resilient uh, 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 infrastructure and building needs cannot fall on the shoulders of developing countries alone. This is a shared responsibility which should be taking, taken by the countries which contribute the most to climate change through pollution. Uh, it seems to us unusual and hostile for the government of the United uh, States, the main pollutant, to intend to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. Even though it may be a universal panacea, it is a, it is a collective effort to face uh, the uh, uh, results of climate change. How many landslides, how many earthquakes, how many hurricanes, how many wounded, how many dead, how many devastated countries are needed to bear witness that climate change, as the United Nations experts themselves have said, is threatening the entire planet and that it is everybody's responsibility to reverse uh, this. The Bolivarian Republic of uh, Venezuela offers its condolences to the families and the victims of the recent uh, hurricanes in the Caribbean as well as the victims of the recent earthquakes in Mexico. Even though we have responded uh, to emergencies in our region in immediate uh, fashion with solidarity, President Nicolas Maduro will provide not only uh, the assistance we have at our, uh, at our disposal, but everything that we can coordinate for our brothers and sisters in Latin America and the Caribbean. The people of Venezuela, as I said at the beginning of my remarks, is subject to constant aggression from hegemonic powers which are trying to seize our natural resources, the greatest uh, oil reserves in the world, one of the largest reserves of gas, of gold, of diamonds, of coltain, of uh, iron, water resources, uh, biological, uh, biodiversity, uh, fertile lands. We have suffered many attacks against our economy, our currency, our production capacity, including the induced uh, generation of internal political violence through political factors that have tried to reach power through non-democratic uh, 
means and have been trying to do so since 2012. This year we suffered four months of political violence intended to uh, displace uh, our president. The opposition was neutralized uh, through the major democratic popular demonstration of uh, July 30th, where more than 8 million Venezuelans uh, turned out to vote for peace and uh, to elect uh, a national assembly which was, f uh, which, was, which was fully representative of the citizenry. The most extreme acts uh, took place on the 30th of July to prevent people from turning out to vote. Peace returned uh, to the country after July 31st. We are witnesses uh, to our constitutional peace. Our uh, National Constitutional Assembly, together with the other con duly constituted powers, has become the pacifier and the protector of the people, but also the instrument par excellence for international dialogue and uh, to legitimately deal with the most urgent problems of our country. Ours is an active, popular democracy. In Venezuela, we have elected 22 electoral processes in the last 18 years. The revolution has triumphed in 20 elections. We have always developed a social dialogue as a way of deepening our democracy. This is why we salute the fact that the Venezuelan political opposition has decided to return to the path of democracy with all of its parties electing, uh, participating in the uh, elections for governors uh, next October 15. We uh, celebrate the fact uh, that the ex-presidents of the, uh, the Dominican Republic of Spain uh, and the Dominican Republic have taken the initiative for dialogue announced by President Nicolas Maduro right after the National Con uh, Constitu uh, Constitutive Assembly was uh, formed and uh, uh, convened a dialogue to which Bolivia, Mexico, and Chile uh, uh, have added uh, their weight. This is the only possible solution, a peaceful, constitutional, and sovereign one, one built by Venezuelans themselves. In these turbulent times in the world, we wish to see a United Nations that is truly united. Any reform process should include all of its members. We need a United Nations which, as I said a few minutes ago, will be really effective to neutralize the violent and unilateral initiatives we are seeing, able to work together with all member states without any hegemonic bias. A United Nations that identifies the true causes of the severe problems affecting humanity today and deal with them without any distractions or pressures, respecting the principles of our charter. The time has come to define ourselves. The fight against healthy multilateralism and perverse unilateralism has reached its height. Let us take decisions with the humblest, the most excluded, those who need us the most in mind. Let us think of Mother Nature. Let us think of our children and grandchildren's needs with the satisfaction of having stopped the worst and guaranteed a future of the best, of peace, of health, of smiles. Through the United Nations, we should build what our liberator Simon Bolivar asked us for in 1815, a system of government which will give us the highest amount of happiness possible, the highest uh, amount of social security and political stability. From this home of multilateralism, we say, long live multilateralism. From the space of international law, we say, long live international law. From the home of peace, we say, long live world peace. From the heart of Venezuela, you can count on the Bolivarian government of President Nicolás Maduro to close ranks around justice, humanism, and peace. As the liberator wrote uh, to José de la Riva Aguero, the president of Peru at the time, in 1823, he said, I am inclined to think that if it is in indispensable, then love for country will emerge victorious. We too have the indispensable certainty that under any circumstances, our love for our Bolivarian sovereign uh, nation of peace, uh, for our, our government that works for peace, love for country will overcome, it will triumph, peace will triumph, it will prevail. We will always prevail. We will always emerge victorious. Thank you very much, sir.
I, I thank His Excellency Rore Areza, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, for his statement.